is best, a butt connector or a wire nut? What do y'all think? Which one do you think is gonna hold up the best? Hey guys, what's up? Turbo John here. I got something today that is gonna be really exciting, I think. I've got a lot of people that they're gonna hate this. They're gonna be like, this idiot, what is he doing? I'm gonna do the ultimate test that I've never seen done before. This is the biggest hack crap I've ever seen in my life. And y'all are gonna trip out. Testing wire connections. <laughs> if y'all look closely on my car, there's a couple of these things floating around. I have never had a wire nut fail. I know they're not designed for automotive, but this thing I've had for about a week together and I've been pulling on it and pushing on it. It's not moved, actually it's not moved at all. So we're gonna do a test. I bought a scale, but we're gonna see which one's better. The butt connector, we know the solder joint's gonna be probably the best, but which is best? A butt connector or a wire nut? What do y'all think? Which one do you think is gonna hold up the best? This is the one that I've been playing with for the last little while. And he, man, I, I've been pulling on this thing and twisting it back and forth. I have been doing a lot of manipulation on this, pulling on it. I had a wire nut fail. Little butt connectors, so I can't keep my hand on it. That, that means it fails automatically. Here goes my nice little Amazon scale that I got. On here, I got, doesn't have the whole thing in there, a little too close. But I'm gonna just hold the nut here, but watch this, I'm pulling on it. Like legit, 16 pounds of force. And that thing is still together. When I do this test, I'm gonna do it another way. Okay, so let's uh, get these down. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on. So, I don't even know, hell, I don't even know how to work this thing. Let's see. Oh, I got noise. Push, pull. Okay. Oh yeah, we got some, some noise happening. There's on. Oh yeah, we're getting hot now. I feel the, ooh, ow. Ooh, that's hot already. So one of the key things to do, soldering is pretty easy. I learned this trick from Brian. I've always struggled with soldering, but if you put just a little bit on the soldering iron itself, gives it a little better contact and then it will heat up a little bit better as it's going and then of course you, you it's going to heat up and then it will eventually start flowing into the wire up here once it gets hot enough There we go. Okay. So now I've got a properly soldered joint. You can see the solder is all the way through. So I can turn this thing off. There's a couple strands on the back back there that didn't quite, quite get it. Now one of the things with solder though that you'll find, and I don't know if this is something that I'm doing wrong, or if it's something that just naturally happens with solder, is as the wire gets hard, it gets brittle. And the solder goes down, like, I'm gonna bend that. So look at this. So you can see there's no flexibility in the wire from this point to this point. So, you know, obviously, I mean, that's a, that's a, a spot that can fail. I mean, that's why there's a lot of people that are professional wires that they, they wire cars for a living. They don't solder anything anymore. Happens, But that is concerning right there. The way that right there, I mean, that right there in a car, you can't bend that. I mean, that's that's a, not a strong bend at all. And I can guarantee you because I've done it and I've seen it happen before on a couple very nicely wired cars where under this insulating coating here on the wire, that that has been a problem and you get a wire break because it's brittle. So I'm gonna just pull on it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do anything right now. Okay, so we got a solder one there, so let's get some butt joints. Okay, so I went and got a uninsulated. Maybe if I don't have the best crimp joint. This is the one you can buy at any part store. So this is the one that most people use. And you see this thing is pretty, pretty solid, it's pretty tight. I think that's a decent crimp. I, mean, I don't know. It's not a lot of the really nice crimp tools. It will more 
It will more squeeze it. Yeah, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to work. I don't know if it's going to be a 100% valid test or not. But the people that are, you know, in a hurry or if you're at the racetrack, you might not have the best tools out there. So, okay, so this one, what I do for the wire nut is just same thing. Just, you know, kind of spiral these together. And that sounds very complicated. But then I do a spiral here as well. Now, you want to make sure you're, when you're turning this, of course, I mean, it's going to wrap it. And then that way, when the when the wire nut grabs it, same wire nut, it's got the metal insert that is metal, so that it grabs. And then with this spiraled, and you're going to go clockwise, of course, just like you're, you know, righty tighty. So shove it up in there, and then just twist it on, and then just keep twisting. And now you can feel it's locked down, and the wires are starting to twist a little bit here. So there again, I'm pulling on it. Okay. So now we got we got three joints. So we have a wire nut that nobody likes. Everybody says it's crazy. And then of course in the in the field out here, uh, if you're at home, then you would wrap this with electrical tape in that same direction so it couldn't come off. But then we have a butt joint that may or may not be proper. Definitely didn't have the best tool. And then a may or may not be <laughs> soldered together properly wire. But um, this is kind of what you see out in the field, I think, most people working on cars that are not professionals. It's kind of with the tools they got. So let's do a pull test. Now this is gonna be the tail of the tape, as they say. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, let's do this. Okay, but first we're gonna have a little banging session. We're gonna bang all these around and see if we have any failures from just doing this. Clearly, uh, music was not my best entry. Okay, some of these cars that bump in real violent, all their wiring and ECU is all jumping around, moving all over the place. Then they let go that button. Okay, end of the run. Do we have any failures? <laughs> that was the quickest. Okay, no failure in that butt joint yet, and I'm pulling on it, you can see. Pulling on it pretty hard, so it's good. Uh, this one, the solder joint. Nope, no failure there. Okay, let's see what we're gonna get on the, on the wire connection. Any failures? Same thing. No failures at all. So since nobody likes the butt joint, let's just hit it a couple more times. Or not the butt joint, nobody likes the wire nut. Okay, I think we're, well, let's, let's go ahead and do the pull test. Now uh, let's beat it a couple more times. Okay, I think we have pretty much abused that one. It's still tight. Oh, that joint feels left out. Nitrous pass. Here's a nitrous pass on this one. It works pretty slow. It's not real fast. Not real violent on nothing. So yeah, that one, <laughs> that one held up fine. Okay, let's do the pull test. Okay, so we got some knots tied in these. So now we're gonna go check them out. We're gonna pull them and see which one pulls apart first. Okay, so the first one, see I've got these handy dandy knots again. They're a uh, version of a double half hitch loop Boy Scout knot, something like that. So I've got this, so it's gonna be pretty simple. So that's just gonna simply go on this. And this is the solder joint. And we're gonna just record and I'm gonna pull on it and see what kind of pressure we can get if it breaks. Get the joint down here too. Oh god, I'm getting nervous. Okay, the cable, the actual look it broke right at the right below the solder joint, and that is the stiff part that I was thinking. So that is the stiffness that I was talking about earlier where it got overheated. How high did it get? 55 pounds. So it broke at 55 pounds. So let's try the next one. Okay. Wow, that's pretty cool. Amazon for the win. Okay, so the next one, 
this is the just the crimp connector and it's pretty flexible so let's see what this one does it's a little sketchy pulling on that thing <laughs> Get my knots nice and tight. Okay. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> okay, how high did it go? Zero. <laughs> Might have to redo that test. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna to need to get another crimper. Okay, that one <laughs> did it really not go to did it go anything I, at all? You have to look at the video. Okay, we're gonna, okay, we're gonna have to go back. Hold on, let's go back and review real fast. And it did go to 15 pounds before it gave okay, up. So we regrouped and got another fitting. And this one I used, I definitely got it a little better. I mean, still I don't have the best equipment to crimp, but I mean, I think it's better. It's better than what most people would probably do. Okay, so we're gonna try again. So try not to have an epic failure at 15 pounds okay so this on now okay ready ready let's pull okay it went higher i think it was around 26 or so okay that's what i thought i saw too 26 or so that's about what i saw too so now Last but not least, any predictions on what this thing is going to hold? I've been beating it and smacking it and moving it all around. I don't know if it'll hold as much as the other one. There's no way it'll, I mean, the wire break on the last one or on the, the soldered, the one that was soldered together. Okay, ready? Okay, see this down here? Look yeah. at Maria at five. What do you predict? What do you predict? Okay, I'm pulling. Oh, how did it go? It didn't catch it. I saw 19 oh. for sure. We'll have to check the video. Okay, let's look at the video and see. Looking what back at the video, it looked like it was about 21 and it just simply come undone. So we're going to see if that one will do it again. It's almost equivalent to that butt joint. So let's try it again. We're going to, I'm going to rewrap it again and then try it. Hold on. Okay, so I got it rewrapped. So it's tied up tight again. Uh, just same thing. So we're going to see if it makes any difference. Or it should be about the same, I would imagine. I don't imagine it's gonna be much different here. Now it could make a difference if I was to hold it like that, but I don't know if that's the case or not. Okay, let me get my handy dandy tool. And maybe the, the light will be able to not reflect on it. Okay, here we go. I feel it kind of slipping a little bit. Something is moving. 24. 27. 27 that time. So, I mean, this thing is pretty, I mean, to be a wire nut that's not designed for this, I think it would be fine to use it in an emergency situation. I mean, it, it actually held about as good as the, the other one. So, I mean, I wouldn't be scared at all. And, you know, it's one of those things. Let's try this one. Now this is one, of course, it should go double that number because it's solid and it's gonna be pulling on both of these. So let's see, let's put that right there. Let's see if we can get this one. Okay, let's, uh oh, hold on. There, okay, ready? So this one should go to like 50 pounds. Might not be. 57, I think. Okay. Something like that. So that makes sense. So we got consistent results because it was pulling on, on both of them that time instead of each one individually. Huh, now wait a minute. It was still pulling on the same joint though. So if you were to, in that case, if you had, if this was split here and you were pulling on, yeah, that's, that makes sense. It's pulling on both of them instead of individually. So yeah, so not scared. So if you have these in a race car, probably not the best. You're probably gonna get laughed at, but it's okay. Tell them it's temporary. It's just a minor distraction. Although, you know, I was gonna wire my whole EFI kit with this just to get everybody so that they were like, oh my God, he's got wire nuts all over his car. What a redneck. That would have worked out perfect. 
Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see y'all next time. Thanks.